Okay, there are all sorts of interesting diseases out there, and lots of them are quite exotic. You've got elephant man syndrome, and you've got progeria, which is a disease where you basically die of old age when you're about 10 years old, and then you've got cannibals eating brains and getting prion diseases, and those are very exciting, and they're great and great. You know, junior high school papers about disease and such. Oh, no, okay, come up to the front. Basic meat and potatoes of human medical misery. There is nothing out there like depression. Depression is absolutely crippling. Depression is incredibly pervasive and thus important to talk about. I'll make the argument here today a number of things, but one critical thing being that basically depression is like the worst disease you can get and I'll make the argument for that in a bit. It is devastating, it is wildly common. Current estimates are 15% of us in this room will have a major depression at some point or other in our lives, so that is not good. What is also clear is it is worldwide. Currently, World Health Organization says depression is the number four cause of disability on this planet, and by the year 2025, it's gonna be number two after obesity, diabetes-related disorders. So it is bad news and it is becoming more common. Okay, do you have some sort of large legitimate loss, setback, whatever, losing a job, unemployment, death of a loved one, and you are extremely impaired by a sense of malaise for weeks afterward, and then you come out the other end. That's sort of what I'll be talking about. But even more so what I'll focus on is the subset of individuals who, when something like that occurs, falls into this depressive state, and weeks and months later, they still have not come out the other end. Okay, so what are the symptoms about? If I had to define major depression in one sentence, I would say it's a biochemical disorder with a genetic component and early experience influences where somebody can't appreciate sunsets. What could possibly be worse than a disease whose defining symptom is the inability to feel pleasure? Thus, at the top of the list, anhedonia. Hedonism, the pursuit of pleasure, anhedonia, the inability to feel pleasure, that is what a depression is about. Works out well, whatever, and they feel nothing. An inability to feel pleasure, way at the top of the list. What else? Grief, guilt, when you're talking about major depression, the grief and the guilt can be so severe that it actually takes on a delusional quality. Depression depressives mutilating themselves at a high rate, and of course, most notoriously, suicide, risks of suicide, and that is absolutely tragic. In teenagers, early adults, that along with accidents is the leading cause of death, major bad news. Called psychomotor retardation. Everything is exhausting. Can't do the laundry because where's the basket, and you gotta find change for the machine, and you gotta go get detergent, and just, it's too much. There's always this little voice between the lines there of, come on, pull yourself together. We all deal with this sort of thing. Depression is as real of a biological disorder as is juvenile diabetes. And you don't sit down a diabetic and say, oh, come on, what's with this insulin stuff? Stop babying yourself and pull it together. You will see this is just as much of a biological disorder. The bodies of major depressives work differently. First set of symptoms. No surprise, lots of people have trouble sleeping when they're having everyday off-the-rack depression. There's a certain pattern with people with major depression. Instead, you wake up early. You wake up four in the morning, five in the morning, you're exhausted, but you're not going to sleep. Early morning wakening. You wind up in an emergency somewhere, emergency room somewhere deeply depressed, and the clinician there better ask you at some point, how's your sleep been? Do you tend to wake up early in the day? Early morning wakening, classic sign. Additional thing. <coughs> You do, do, while sleeping, sleep is not this monolithic process. There's all these different stages of sleep, slow wave sleep, deep sleep, REM sleep, all of that. There's a structure and architecture to how we sleep. If somebody with depression while they're sleeping, and these different phases are completely disordered. The things you eat more, that's not what you see in major depression, decreased appetite. What you have instead is somebody whose body is blasting through their overactivated stress response, this enormous battle 
all of it going on internally. This is someone whose body is having a massive stress response 24-7. There's a huge battle going on, and it's all internally, increased metabolic rate, increased muscle tone, all of this, again, screaming biology. Next problem was, it turned out, norepinephrine is useful in this pathway. Another neurotransmitter turned out to be even more important, neurotransmitter called dopamine. Dopamine cocaine works on dopamine systems. Biggest problem came in the late 80s with the introduction of Prozac. Prozac, which is an SSRI, a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, what that does is work on a completely different neurotransmitter system, this neurotransmitter called serotonin. What that drug does is it does the same deal. It stops the reuptake, increased serotonin signaling, and then once your hypothesis, ooh, you give somebody a Prozac SSRI, they feel better, I bet you there was too little serotonin, which starts with <laughs> suggesting that, oh, maybe it's got something to do with norepinephrine and serotonin, and dopamine, and everybody hold hands, and, <laughs> and that's absolutely what's going on. The best evidence at this point, to be insanely simplistic, is that dopamine has something to do with the anhedonia, an absence of dopamine. The absence of norepinephrine has something to do with the psychomotor retardation. The absence of serotonin is this obsessive sense of grief. And interestingly, supporting that notion is you can have an obsessive sense of something else. You can have an obsessive need to keep your utensils perfectly symmetrical and obsessively wash your hands eight hours a day. Obsessive compulsive disorder, that's helped by SSRIs like Prozac as well. Whatever it is, you are just perseverating over like that, getting increasing serotonin signaling. So you've got at least three different neurotransmitters
my hand on a glass. I broke a window in my apartment. This guy's walking down the street when he falls in the hall. The walls are so steep he can't get out. A doctor passes by and the guy shouts up, Hey, you, can you help me out? The doctor writes a prescription, throws it down in the hall and moves on. Then a priest comes along and the guy shouts up, Father, I'm down in this hole. Can you help me out? The priest writes out a prayer, throws it down in the hole and moves on. Then a friend walks by. Hey, Joe, it's me. Can you help me out? And the friend jumps in the hole. Our guy says, are you stupid? Now we're both down here. The friend says, yeah, but I've been down here before and I know the way out. Oh. 